I'm not really sure what happened to my audio. For some reason it went mute and I don't want to really react to silence because it did not capture any audio whatsoever. And most of my reactions are really kind of blind reactions and if I re-reacted to it, it just wouldn't be the same. So I, I don't want to react to new content because it's pretty late at night at this moment. So I'm really sorry about that. So this episode will be just clips, but you can always leave a comment down below. I'm always down there chatting with you guys. And with that being said, have a good day. Do you remember the rumors of an underwater alien base being located just off the California coast near Malibu? And what was crazy is that you could even find it for yourself by checking out Google Maps. But you can't anymore. Because that area has apparently been scrubbed. But of course, pictures of this structure still exist on the internet. And thanks to Ripley Cooks, we even have recent video of this anomaly. Whether it's a massive underwater alien base or just a really strange underwater geographical structure is unknown. But what is known is that it's 2,000 feet underwater and approximately 3 miles wide. And it appeared to have an array of columns that were supporting a giant dome. But now it's just a big blurry mess. And the changes of this area on Google Maps comes within days of Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet publishing his white paper titled Beneath the Surface. We may learn more about UAP by looking in the ocean. A paper in which he states that 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, but only 25% of the seabed has been mapped to modern standards. And only 5% of the total volume of the world's ocean has been explored. So we know more about the surface of Mars and the Moon than we do about our own ocean. And if we begin to explore our oceans in hopes of finding more evidence of UAPs, or in this case USOs, unidentified submerged objects, a byproduct of that effort is that we would learn a lot more about our planet and be better off because of it. And as a nation, it would potentially close any domain awareness gaps we have in the water. And that's why I think we should definitely be paying more attention to the underwater aspect of the phenomenon. These may look small, but they're very powerful because I've got these large African amethysts. You could tell an African amethyst because it will have cream white striations in it. A pure amethyst is purple. And there's so much of it here. And then I put in some more small amethyst and rose quartz in addition. So when that hardens on the bottom, then I begin with the metal. I've got aluminum, I've got brass, I've got steel. And in that, I put shungite and hematite and black onyx and my proprietary stuff mixed in with the resin and the metals. It doesn't matter as long as you have metal of some kind. The metal is the repulsion force. The resin is the attractive force which creates chaotic energy. But when you have the crystals in there, the crystals transmute this chaotic energy. And that's what people don't understand. They want to know measurement. They miss the whole point. You can't do that. But the people who are energy sensitive and they can feel the good energy from the bad negative energy, you can't fool them. Their body, their entire body gives them the feedback that it's good.
face-to-face meetings between United States officials and extraterrestrials from other star systems. I have reports of several species that are here and have bases here. There's one species that looks something like a praying mantis. And then the, the short uh, grays are the ones that you see in the cartoons. The tall grays they look much different. They're more, they look more like uh, humans. And uh, the Nordic blondes, for example, uh, are so similar to humans that they can walk uh, down the street and not be detected. They are way ahead of us in medicine, agriculture, and uh, still, I guess, presumably in technology. They know something we don't know, and that is every atomic bomb that is put off on Earth has an effect on other parts of the cosmos. They were concerned about it. Wait, wait, wait. Were you under the impression that seasons suggest that we're on a ball? (laughs) Oh, dude, no. Seasons actually prove that the Earth is flat. Let me explain. So I'm supposed to believe that the sun is 93 million miles away from the Earth, and seasons are caused by the simple tilt of the Earth as it orbits the sun? Yeah, there's a lot of problems with the heliocentric model, but this one's really obvious. The sun rays are coming in 93 million miles away. Again, just just picture this. The rays are traveling through a space vacuum, 93 million miles, the warmth of the sun, 93 million miles. And I'm supposed to believe that the tilt of the Earth causes winter and summer. And the angle of the light coming in does this. If the warmth from the sun is already traveled 93 million miles, I don't think it would care for the simple tilt of the Earth. A couple hundred miles, throw a million on there. I don't think it would cause summer and winter. But it only gets worse the more I look into this model. The perihelion of any orbit of a celestial body about the sun is the point where the body comes nearest to the sun. It is opposite for the aphelion. The perihelion, us being closest to the sun, is in January. When I have winter, 91.4 million miles away. And the aphelion is in July, 94.5 million miles away. So I'm supposed to believe that during summer, we're farthest away from the sun, and during winter, we're closest to the sun? But in reality, on the flat Earth model, the sun is just getting closer and farther away from the North Pole, causing seasons. For example... On the sun's most inner rotation around our flat Earth, that's when Alaska can see its 24-hour day. And uh, Antarctica never can see a 24-hour day. Those videos are fake. They were done over, you know, three days. They took three different sunsets, laid them over each other. It's all been proven. But before you go on enjoying your night, remember this model spawned from the Big Bang, just a random explosion, okay? How is there so many sixes just perfectly lining up? around this globe if it oh my god you guys this just makes me want to cry so fucking bad okay so if okay first of all we're talking about mk ultra you can go click on this comment to go back to the video i had just made about where they took us i made a video of the building where they took us for tag talented and gifted and i also have a playlist on my page where you can click on the mk ultra playlist and see what we've already been talking about (laughs) this makes me want to cry so bad So in this video, I want to touch on if you think that you have been MK Ultra'd, that's what I want to touch on. Okay, so this comment says, truth, all with gifts, all with gifts, okay? When you're a child, you come into this world with all of your gifts, all of your magic, all of your clairs, and it is adults who squash us down and tell us that we're not magic and that those gifts are, you can't do that, and you can't do that, and you can't, blah, 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 blah. If you know, you fucking know, okay? Okay, so again, the government wants to know who has gifts, and they prick your heel Government checks DNA to keep an eye on you. Burp confirmation. Okay. If, okay, so first of all, I would have never thought that I had been MK Ultra if it wasn't for a friend at the time for a whole year or two telling me that she really thought that I had been MK Ultra and she told me like all of these symptoms that I had. Um, but because just like, and I'm going to keep going back to just like with pedophilia. 
they don't fucking want you to talk about this, okay? These are all the secrets. These are all the bad secrets that nobody wants us talking about. And so, number one, if you were MK Ultra, they will, pro everyone around you, and you probably have handlers and the gang stalking shit and everything too. You probably have ha had to deal with that if you were MK Ultra, is my guess. Um, so number one, when you're trying to figure this out, people are going to try to make you feel like you're crazy. Oh, you're just a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. Oh, why did that? Ha oh, what? Oh, uh, 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 uh. they're, they're going to try to make you feel crazy. Don't let them because number two, you will know, you will know we hold on to everything. Our subconscious, unconscious DNA, body, fucking aura chakras everything our energy we fucking hold on to everything so even if they did wipe our minds and plant new memories in there we will still know the truth okay you will feel it in your body like i said at the beginning like i just want to fucking cry right now because here's the thing and i'm sorry i'm tired and i'm really trying to like articulate this and make it like the easiest way possible okay so the government wants to know what gifts we have so they can keep an eye on us because they don't want us to change the world. Okay. So number three, you could be a person who has felt like you're being watched all the time. You feel like you're being watched all the time. Maybe you, like the whole gang stalking thing too. But like, if you know about uh, remote viewing, then you also know what I'm talking about. And also, too, here's another example in movies, because movies are true. They have to tell us the truth, and so they put it in movies because they think that everyone's just going to be like, oh, well, that's just a movie. That's not real. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, so in the Divergent series, in the third one, at the very end of the third one, the main character is in whatever place that they're in and she's talking to the people, but the other dude, the bad guy is standing right there. She can't see him because he has either, um, remote viewed or somehow he is spying on her and watching her, but he doesn't know. She doesn't know. She can't see him. It's so fucking creepy. It's at the very end of the third Divergent series video. Okay. That is what it's like when you feel like, you know, that people are watching you. Like you just, you fucking know. Okay. If you have been MK ultra, things will just start making sense and you will just, you will feel it. You will fucking know. Okay. Because yeah, they're always keeping an eye on us all the time because they don't want us to use our gifts. Like I said, they don't want us to use our gifts and help change the world for the better. Because if we all had our gifts still, if they were functioning, like from when we were kids, we would have just done change the fucking world by now. The UK is now the worst country on earth. I'm leaving. See you on a flight. Yep, I'm getting on a plane right now. So if you don't know, let me quickly recap the stuff that's been going on in the UK recently. If you're American, this is going to interest you because you're going to be happier over there. We're destined for financial ruin. No one's got any money. But of course, there's been a lot of new plans since January to implement new things into the UK system, such as completely scrapping A-levels, meaning everybody has to stay in school for a lot longer. If you didn't know that, I'm sorry. Also, everybody now has to do maths and English until they're 18. You can't just, like, choose your subjects, whereas before you could say, oh, A-level, I'm going to do music and science, but no, not anymore. On top of that, there was the smoking and vaping bans, which, yeah, I kind of agree, raising the legal age limit each year, so a 14-year-old today will never be able to buy a cigarette. But there was also a lot of talk about banning vaping, but now they've just added tax on vaping to make more money, so... Great. But now, there was a study done recently on the best places on Earth and the worst places on Earth, ranked upon how happy people are living in that country. UK was like the best place on Earth a while ago. People would flock from all around the world to come to the UK. It was like a place where everyone was like, oh, I can come here, I can make money, it's just an amazing place. We were probably a little bit too lenient on that, you know? So the UK is now officially the second most depressing country in the world. So not quite first, but... We're probably coming for that number one spot. Uzbekistan is in number one, so shout out my Uzbekistani people. Now, apparently this is all because of the pandemic. Everybody is still depressed, everybody is jobless, everybody is, you know, miserable because of what happened back in 2020. And I get some of that, but I don't think it's all down to that. So yeah, I really don't know. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you like the UK? And if you want to leave, where should we go? Follow button and I will see you in the next one. All right, I have been seeing Ryan Garcia exposing the elites all over TikTok. 
I worked at the Bohemian Grove when I was 16 years old as a steward or a dishwasher, if you will. And I'm going to go over a little bit of what it was like as my experience working there and the ground rules that are set for all workers at the Grove. So first and foremost, you pull up, you park your car in a huge parking lot, all the workers park there. This parking lot is a little bit off site. It's right when you enter the Grove. There are shuttles that come every 15, 20 minutes to take you to the Grove, to the kitchen. If you're working there, you're either a busser, you're a server, you're a steward, you're a chef, or you're security and you're dealing with luggage at the front, all right? So I was in the kitchen, obviously. The first day you get there, the first hour of working, they huddle you all up in the kitchen to go over some ground rules. The first thing you are told, obviously you don't have your phone. If there is an emergency, if you are having an emergency, if anything happens, do not call 911. They won't know where you are. They will not be able to locate you. Anything that is heard, said, or seen stays in the grove. You do not discuss anything that happens in the grove outside of the grove, okay? What happens there stays there. Next up. For your breaks, all right, you have a very small section of where you can stay. You are not allowed to wander outside of the perimeters where the workers can be. I also just want to put out there, I was maybe one of three girls that were stewards, okay? And that's out of at least, per shift, maybe like 10 or 15 of us, all right? To piggyback off of what I said earlier about what happens there stays there. There was somebody who came on my second week. He came, he sat down, he had lunch with us. Mind you, lunchtime, everybody's together. It's all the chefs. It's everybody who works there. We all come together. The, chef make, the chefs make a huge meal. No members in sight, all right? They're somewhere else. They're in their cabins. They're doing whatever it is they do. There was somebody who came and sat at our table for lunch, all right? And he had mentioned to us he's been working there for over five years. He told us there's a lot of information that he knows. And for that reason, they did not want to hire him back to work at the Grove. All right. He had exposed a few different things that he had seen go on in the Grove during his shift or during his break. All right. We were all shocked. That's the least I can say. The next day, this guy was gone. We never, ever saw him again. After he had said what was said at that lunch table, we had never seen him again. That's the least I can say. The Bohemian Grove is a real place, all right? I worked there. I cleaned the dishes of the members. So a little bit of some of the ground rules and a little bit of my experience working at the Grove. So um, it is a real place. The daily reminder that these are the people that actually decide basically everything on behalf of the entire country, where our money gets spent, how much we pay in taxes, whether or not TikTok gets banned, what's considered freedom, what's not. These people probably don't even know how to attach a PDF file to an email. These people probably don't even know how to connect their phone to the Wi-Fi. These people haven't worked a real fucking job and probably 30 years. And also keep in mind that once you get voted into one of these political positions, you get paid at minimum like $200,000 for the rest of your life. So they can just sit in Congress, do absolutely nothing, and just age gracefully in quotation marks. The worst part about elderly people being in political power is that they're not even going to have to live through the decisions that they are making on behalf of everyone else. They'll be gone by the I time the actual act. real consequences come from their actions that they're deciding on right now. It just makes me sick. And if you look down there, I don't see a single person that looks like they are even at the age of 40. Every single one of these people is 60 plus, And there's a reason for that. So the House of Representatives just passed a new $460 billion spending bill. And obviously that $460 billion is our money. So let's talk about where it's going. $850,000 for bus stop equity in California. What does that mean? $15 million to put ankle monitors on cows to keep track of them. Like, what? $1.65 million to teach kindergartners about climate change. I'm not saying teaching about climate change is a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying in kindergarten, you barely know how to put your socks on. Why do we need to teach them about climate change, especially when it's one and a half million dollars of our money? If it's privately funded, sure. But don't fund that with our money. I mean, that would be the equivalent of teaching kindergartners how to be mechanics. Like, it's probably good to know about but not in kindergarten. And among other things, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a million dollars for a solar-powered jail in the South Pacific. 
So here's what I would change. I would give that $15 million that you're giving the cows to homeless people. I would take that $850,000 for bus stop equity, and I'd fix some of the potholes because my car can't take another damn pothole. And last but not least, I'd take that $1.6 million that they want to give for kindergartners to learn about climate change, and instead, I would give all the public school teachers in that district a raise. <laughs> the genetic manipulation by the Anunnaki is more than mere myth. It finds echoes in the ancient texts and archaeological findings scattered across East Central Africa. The discovery of ancient gold mines dating back 100,000 years aligns perfectly with the mitochondrial DNA evidence tracing the origins of Homo sapiens to the same region. The theory of the Anunnaki is further supported by intriguing astronomical evidence. The perturbations observed in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune, alongside data from the infrared astronomical satellite, hint at the existence of a tenth planet in our solar system. This celestial body, believed by some to be Nibiru, is the alleged home of the Anunnaki. While scholars remain divided over the accuracy of Zachariah Sitchin's translations of ancient texts with figures like Michael Heiser offering criticisms and others like Alessandro de Montes defending Sitchin's work. Beyond the realm of language, the influence of the Anunnaki is evident in the sudden emergence of advanced Sumerian civilization, marked by significant leaps in technology, mathematics and astronomy. Hallmarks of Anunnaki tutelage, the ancient Sumerian pantheon of Anunnaki has cast a long shadow over the Americas as well. Deities like Veriko Chia and Quetzalcoatl bear striking resemblances to Sumerian gods Ishkur and Ninja Zita, Thoth, suggesting a transcontinental cultural exchange. The megalithic structures scattered across South America not only showcase advanced engineering, but also feature alignments and construction techniques that mirror those of ancient Sumeria and other old world civilizations. Central to the Anunnaki saga is the construction of spaceports, conduits for the celestial exchange between Earth and Nibiru. These operations, however, were marred by dissent among the Anunnaki laborers, leading to a pivotal moment in terrestrial history, the engineered birth of humanity as a solution to the labor crisis. The deluge, a global flood that nearly wiped out all trace of humanity from the planet, necessitated the construction of a new spaceport in the Sinai Peninsula, under the direction of Hathor, also known as Ninharsag. This period also witnessed the Giza Pyramid's emergence as functional beacons in the Anunnaki's terrestrial operations, challenging conventional historical accounts of their purpose and origin. John has just released a 60-page comprehensive report on UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. And in it, the Department of Defense says there is no evidence of any alien visits to our planet. However, the DOD is developing, quote, gremlin capability to help personnel collect real-time UAP data. What's the top line? What is the takeaway? What surprised me, first of all, is they've got very granular, very detailed into making rebuttals against some of these claims. They're actually talking about specific um, programs, alleged programs of reverse engineering. Um, so yes, you're correct. They have denied that any of these investigations have resulted, quoting even one case of UAP representing off-world technology, 
Um, I don't know what we expected them to say. I would give them credit that I did not expect this report to be so detailed. There are actual things we can grasp a hold of and say, okay, let's look at this, let's look at that. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you, you have to remember that their bosses, their boss is the same boss of the agencies they've been asked to investigate. So apparently celebrities live forever. Watch this. Think you are correct. They live multiple lives and get to choose what life they wanted to do. Don't get me wrong, genetics do pass on, but they literally look the same. A dude that look like you. <laughs> okay. So they just think that you've been on the earth since the earth, since you, you've just been around, there's just different generations. I just wanted to show you just We're in case. We're all stardust, baby. I know, that's it. You know. What is my name? Name, name. <laughs> uh, look at this. Okay, this so what do we got? What do you think? What is this in the beard and the cheekbone? And the forehead. Look at oh. that guy. That's oh, a French hey. actor, Paul M M Monet. Yeah, we have the same foreheadish eyebrow, I think. Yeah. But that's the real... Oh. No, I kind of see a little bit of... That's the revolutionary. Got the eyes. I can... Yes! Okay, thank you to my subscribers that went ahead and wrote this. This is so true. We need to be paying close attention to the terminology used in these documents and on the news. This is now a Pentagon review of decades of government investigations into UFO sightings has found no evidence any of those sightings were extraterrestrial. No evidence of an alien cover-up by the American government. Tonight, eight months after that out-of-this-world testimony on Capitol Hill. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human. The official word from the Pentagon, no dead alien bodies, no crashed alien craft, and no government cover-up. Hey, that's the secret right here. So, there might not be any um, extraterrestrials out there, according to the Pentagon, but David Grush did not really use that word. He used interdimensional. Call it interdimensional, call it shadow bio. Okay. That could be a huge difference that could completely change the whole course. So although the Pentagon is claiming this, and maybe that is why they didn't allow News Nation to be a part of that, because News Nation was going to ask those picky questions. Uh, any guesses on why uh, News Nation wasn't invited, since News Nation is the one that broke the story? <laughs> I think it's purely and simply because we're asking the hard questions. So one of the criticisms that I've quite openly made about a lot of the national security reporters that do get invited to these events is they know that if they rattle the cage on this issue and cause too many hard questions to be asked, they don't get invited back to those Pentagon briefings. And so what the Pentagon's trying to do is to control the narrative. Thank you, subscribers. Very, very well said. Um, yeah, David Grush used the word interdimensional, and Luna also said this. Incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Grush uses. You know, Grush never said extra terrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. Great catch to the subscribers. Um, also, another thing I want to point out is that this Pentagon report is two separate pages. So yes, we have the first part of the report that's 60 pages long, and then there will be a follow-up to this that's a secondary piece to this report. So I have no idea how long that's going to be and when it's going to come out. It's very interesting. But keep in mind that Lou Elizondo said this earlier this week on X. So y'all, something's still coming, and it might not be aliens anymore, but it's still very well could be interdimensional beings thank you guys so much for watching thank you so much for the information followers a friendly reminder is always always um enjoyed so thank you so much i appreciate all of you guys and we'll talk to you soon